Hey, it's me again. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I want to talk about something that um, I think it was Robert Spencer when he was speaking touched on. And I knew exactly what letter he was talking about because he was talking about the fact that the letters in Arabic, uh, you can write them with vowels or without vowels. So, um, or with markers or without markers. Um, I forget what the markers are called. Um, the dots and the lines and stuff. And he was talking about this one letter, and I knew exactly what he was talking about when he said it, um, where it, it, well, it's a shape, and it can mean, like, three different letters to, according to the dots, um, and it's, this is kind of an exaggerated form of it, but it's this, and it can have, you can have a dot underneath it, two dots over it, you can have three dots over it changes. Let me put the dots there, but I'm just showing. Well, there's a little mark underneath. Um, and that's very important because the oldest Qurans, and this is freely admitted, do not have these these markers. Um, in Sana, um, there was <coughs> there was an archaeological find of this very old masjid, this very old mosque, and they found um, piles and piles of um, of writing and they saw it was the Quran. Well, there's far too much material there to contain the Quran. I mean, um, right here. This is a Quran. Again, I don't think you can buy this at any bookstore. This is from the Magic. Uh, and as you can see, it's Arabic, and then the middle is the phonetic of how to pronounce it, and then there's the English translation. This is Muhammad Marmaduke Pikthal. This was the only one I had to read. I always didn't like the other ones. And plus, Yusuf Ali's Quran is, um, it's, it's, I don't like the translation. Um, like, it'll say, it'll, it'll translate Thalatha into, into Trinity, and Thalatha is three. Um. The, uh, <coughs> so you can see, even the, the small writing, if you were to pull that out to a page, it would be a page, even if it was very big. But, I mean, there's, there's stacks of material. And then, I think it, this would be probably, it would be about twice as big as this if the writing was very big. And, um, or let's even say four times this big. But they've got rooms, full, I mean, this was just packed into the walls for insulation. It was... And tons of stuff. Um, well, that's very interesting because how do we know what the Quran says? Um, comes out of very, uh, we can say, Nabataean is Proto Arabic, uh, and it was uh, Arabic for for um, from that time. Um, we don't get to modern Arabic until, or not even, well, anything resembling Arabic until about a hundred years after, or maybe even three, of when uh, the Muslim armies pour out of Arabia. Now, why is this important? Because a lot of this could have been Aramaic, because they use pretty much the same letters. I mean, even in, um, if you listen to how, uh, what the letters are in the uh, Hebrew alphabet and what the letters are in the Arabic alphabet, you'll start, those things will start clicking, like, oh, that's that, that's that, you know. Um, and there's ones that are exactly the same. There's letters that are exactly the same. Now, they're used differently, absolutely, just as in any, I mean, you look at the languages that are, have a base Latin or a Roman alphabet, you can see... Um, I mean, from Polish to Tagalog, you see letters used differently. Um, but the, uh, it's, oh, it's, it's, if it, and he actually brings up the idea that, look, the Byzantines, after Christianity had become accepted, well, not even after, the, after, from the time of Theodosius, if you, we look at the time, supposedly, um, the death of Muhammad, I think it's, 630, so 630 A.D. 
is the death of Muhammad. Um, and Islam, let's just put it at 600 to make it easy for people. And we'll say about 400 is when um, Christianity had taken control. Yeah, but it was legalized much earlier than that. Um, or tolerated, I should say. Uh, so for 200 years, you have groups of Christians, because what was big, what was important for an empire, it's, they didn't have a cohesive idea of politic. You know, it's not like how the Constitution binds the Amer Americans together, or the Bill of Rights, or, you know, Declaration of Independence, or anything like that. Uh, our idea of freedom, of all men be cre being created equal, of um, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and freedom, and all this kind of stuff. And they didn't have something like communism, either. And so it was a multinational uh, empire. And you had two of these. You had the Byzantines, who had Christianity, and you had the Zoroastrians, or you had the Persians that had Zoroastrianism. Well, the Byzantines, what they were doing is that when uh, the emperors really tried to push this idea of the state religion, I mean, it might, it's not all of them, but some of them did so, they'd be expelling heretics out. Of course, we know the Aryans. But the Aryans and them, it was an ebb and flow. But some some groups lost favor and were not favored. I mean, they, they, there was no debate. It was, they're out. Um, a group of Gnostics known as the Coloridians, uh, we know were in Southern Arabia, and they believed that Jesus, uh, that the Trinity was Jesus, the Father, and Mary. Uh, there were many, many forms of Gnosticism, Marcionism, the you just go a little bit south, and there's a huge trading two huge trading cities, Mecca and Medina, which are pagan and have Jews, Christians of all stripes. So it would be very hospitable. Uh, even they had Hindus there, uh, so this would be a place where people people could go if they if they weren't if they uh, if the envi if the political environment wasn't friendly to them. <coughs> Or I should say religious, but back then it, it really was no, I mean, that was the original politic. So, <clears throat> you have these Christians and uh, Jews and things like that getting um, expelled and they're around this area and they're right across the sea from Ethiopia. And it's funny because for the first 60 years of Islam, they were minting coins using the name Muhammad and on the back was a cross. In many cases, there were images of people. Now, one thing we know about Islam is that drawing an image of a person or an animal is strictly prohibited. People say, oh, drawing a picture of Muhammad, that's foolish. No, it's any person. Ask a Muslim, can you draw a picture of a human being? They'll say no, because God will ask you at the last day to breathe life into that, to, to make it speak, and you won't be able to. You can't draw anything. That's why... Um, it's only geometric images or images of plants on the prayer rugs and on the majets. There's no images. Well, this is strange because uh, some of the earliest things we have from Islam are pictures of what they claim to be Muhammad, but his face is covered and there's a fire coming from his head, which um, is how Moses is depicted. So I'd say those are Moses and not Muhammad. Um, but there's these pictures on the coins it's a man in a crown holding a staff with a cross on top. On the other side is Muhammad. At the Dome of the Rock, we see the name, or it's not a name, the word Muhammad uses, which is a praised one, and then it all talks about Jesus for the next five lines. Um, he's saying this was Jesus. This was a heretical form of Christianity that uh, was very, had a, did not like, um, the Orthodox view and was very violent. Um, in the first accounts of of the Islamic conquest, it had nothing to do with Islam. It said a band of Jews that bound together with their Arab brothers and went out and fought. And many of the surahs in the Quran, um, when they're seen in the light, if, if they were Aramaic, they're very easy to understand, whereas the Quran in Arabic is not, it's not easy to understand if it's Arabic or even translated from Arabic. I mean, it's it's almost garbled, but in in Aramaic, you see them as ancient Christian hymns. The night of power, it's a night with a star. I mean, in the Aramaic, it's with a star and, 
you know, this with the angel and the, you know, God. And it's actually the nativity. The night of power is actually the nativity. It's garbled in Arabic. Arabic. It's something strange. And the first biography, which is this, Life of Muhammad by um, Ibn Asak, uh, didn't come about till 125 years after. Um, and <coughs> we don't hear even hear about Muhammad or Muslims or the Quran for 60 years. And then after 60 years, we, we hear it, Muhammad basically being used as Jesus. Uh, and uh, there's <coughs> these very um, late, it's really the 390s when it comes out. I, I keep saying 30, 60 years. It's more like 40, 50 years. We don't see it. It's in the 390s where it starts coming together and that the Quran was collected. It wasn't collected by Uthman either. Um, it was attributed to him to give uh, to lend credibility. Uh, and then you see these outpouring of stories that are contradictory. Um, so the evidence for did Muhammad exist is very strained, and the biographies keep getting bigger and bigger. They keep they have more information as time goes. Hundred, you know, another hundred years later, they have a biography with much more information. The other biography with much more information, and a lot of the stories and what's believed in Islam today uh, comes from the later biographies, the later surahs, the later hadiths, the later sirah. Um, sirah is a biography. Um, and the one thing that we know is that people, the different sides that were warring against each other, because the amazing thing, the one thing that started making me question Islam is, why are the Sahaba killing each other? They're always following Muhammad, and you see this in, even in the Islamic history, even in what's written down by them, uh, the Muslim sources, is that the Sahaba were killing each other. I mean, going pitched battle and wars and then assassinating each other. Uh, the first five caliphs of Islam were all assassinated. You had Muhammad, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. They were all assassinated. Now, isn't this strange? And this is from the Islamic source. So I think, again, I think there was a warlord who started conquering. Um, but I think Muhammad originally was the praise when it was Christ, was Jesus. Uh, and it was a heretical movement of Christianity that bound itself with the old Jewish law. I mean, it might even be what we might call Ebionites. And you see its, its pilgrimage site is a clearly a Hindu shrine of Shiva. Um, and it's very funny that the many most of the early Islamic buildings have crosses on them. And the Dome of the Rock, which looks like a Byzantine church, because that's what it was, got converted that from the Romans, but the early Islamic um, buildings were were churches. They had crosses on them, and they had images in them, because this, this is before all the prohibitions afterwards, you know, after they kind of figured out, and why, why a religion? Why did they need Islam? If, 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 it, if Muhammad didn't exist, why would they need to invent him? Well, what did I say earlier in the video? Is that the Persians kept their uh, empire together, their identity is Zoroastrians, the Byzantines, Christianity. So you have this rapid expansion of an empire spanning from India to Spain. Necessitates to create it. Um, and Islam forged in the gap of after two great empires, the Byzantines and the Persians, had exhausted themselves through war. So it was, it was easy pickings for the for the Muslims. So I submit, and even before Robert Spencer wrote his book, I look and see did, is did Muhammad exist? And my old video from the other channel is still up there, and it's one of the top. I think it's it's one of the top ten videos. When if you just type in "Did Muhammad exist?" and I'm right there, and it's me speaking from just learning about what a German Muslim scholar had found. So it's all 
It's all very strange. Um, again, I don't believe the same claim can be made for Jesus, but there have been for the last 150 years people investigating, did Jesus really exist? And there haven't been death threats and things like this, and people have been killed, or there's not bookstore. I mean, when Bart Ehrman writes his books, nobody, you know, sets the bookstore on fire, but Robert Spencer wrote a book, and now, now it's all gone crazy. Okay, peace to you. May God save Serbia and Syria. Thank you for your prayers.